Welcome back, everybody, to a very special version of Versus, where it is me against Will this time. I put him up against Ennisman, which actually broke into my top five movies last year. Uh, personally, let me let, let, let me let me preface that my personal top five. And then um, Will was shocked that I had never seen the raid. So we're going to stack them up against each other to a degree. Um, give you our thoughts on how we felt about each of them and then go from there. Stay tuned. Now I'll let you open it up because it's killing me. You at least already know that I ordered the steel book. I at least gave you that much. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so you, it. all right, I'll go first. So, Ennisman. I forget when we talked about this movie. I think it was on, um, it was actually on our best of the year. Yep. It was our best yep. of the year. You said it was in your top five. It was my number five pick. And after watching it, um, I'm wondering why. <laughs> okay. Um, no, here, here's, <laughs> here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. I'll, I'll, I'll get into the good first. Okay. okay we're we're going we're gonna to do the good, the bad, and the ugly, or in this case, the good, the bad, okay. and the weird. I dig it. Right? Yeah. Um, I appreciate the fact that it was shot on 16 millimeter. You know, I, yes. I noticed that immediately. So it, it immediately gave me like, you know, Texas chainsaw vibes. Um, yeah. For 16 millimeter, it looked, it looked beautiful. Um, Gorgeous. The, the shots were fantastic. There's 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 an eeriness to it that is very permeating. Yeah. Um, you know, it was it, even from it, right from the beginning, you just get these instantly just weird vibes, you know, and it's slightly uncomfortable. It's it's I don't know if I would call it like uh, like a fever dream or anything like that. It's just again, I guess we could say dream like in the aspect that um it's definitely a very cerebral experience. Um, not not necessarily a lot of information given to us. You know, it kind of takes its time to to get you to where where it it wants to go or where it ends up being. Um, I thought that was for the most part it was it was it was well done. You know, I think yeah. aesthetically. Um, I forget the director's name, and maybe you can help me out with that. Mark Jenkins. Uh, it's above Mark your head. Jenkins. That's the only reason I remembered. Oh, it's, it's right there. Yeah. Good. I'm, not, I'm not looking at my screen. That's why I'm, I got my other page That's fair. pulled up. Um, I, you know, and I am curious um, because when I when I looked into this movie after watching it, a lot of people that I guess we can say were in, kind of in my, I guess we could say my boat after yeah. watching this where they were like unsure about it. Uh, a lot of people recommended his other movie, which I think is called Bait. Or, yes, or baited. Bates is so, really good. I do want to check that out. But as far as Ennisman's concerned, yeah, I, I appreciate the fact that it was shot on 16 millimeter. I think aesthetically, visually, the film looks really, really, really good. Um, yeah. Love the shots of the island. Uh, uh, gorgeous. Love, love, it, it's very, very beautiful um, landscape. Shots of the landscape, shots of the waves crashing up against the rocks. Beautiful. Um, that's actually what creeped me out. You know, that there's, there's moments where the camera kind of zooms in on things that, where there's nothing there. Right. Yeah. Just, eerie. Uh, and then there's, yeah. And it's, it's, again, there's just, it's kind of, it's just an eeriness, you know, there's an mm. eeriness to everything. Um, and there's, it, it, it kind of establishes this feeling of uncertainty. Now my, my issues with it, I guess I could say are more of, uh, I don't want to necessarily say pacing, but and here's the thing. I don't necessarily blame this movie for being what it is. The movie that I blame for, for I think, how I perceived this movie or how I approach this movie or once it got going. Yeah. Uh, I kind of had these notions in my mind, and it was after I watched Skinnamarink. Okay. Oh, okay. Because Skinnamarink was hyped up beyond belief by, you know, people I knew were like, oh, you got to check this movie out. It's like, you know, it's right up your alley. You're a horror dude. And and I watched Skin and Marink and I'll be, I'll be completely honest. I, I, we don't want to talk about Skin and Marink during this episode. I'm just going off on a slight tangent here, but <laughs> Skin and Marink is overrated. Yeah. I'm just going to be completely honest. I know it has its fans out there, but it is yeah. one of the most boring movies I think I've ever seen. Damn. Um, I haven't seen it, so I'll take your word yeah. for that. Yeah. I, you might like it, but I mean, so I understand why you like Ennisman. It's it's much more of a, it's more it of like a psychedelic it's beautiful. horror film. Yeah. 
it, it's got a psychedelic aesthetic to it. Yeah. Where you, you really, it, it, it takes its time to establish the story. And even then, yeah, there's not a lot of information that's, that's verbally given to us, right? It, it's, it's much more so a visual presentation. It's a visual story than it is uh, a verbal story in terms of yeah. dialogue. Um, with the woman on the island, and I, I don't believe we even, I don't know if we even, um, I don't, from what I remember, we're not really names. given her name. She's just known no. as the observer or something yeah. like that. She's there to observe um, plant life uh, on the island, yeah, uh, and and how it's being affected. Um, and as the movie goes on, you know, we're we're we we discover that there's obviously something else going on with this island. It's kind of interesting because, and, and there's one image I remember particularly is the, uh, I don't know if it's a photo or a painting that's hanging in the house that she's staying in of the, I guess we can say, what would you call it? A statue? Not a, it's not a statue. It's more like a, not a monument, but it's like that obelisk, that rock yeah. that's kind of there on the island. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it, it's actually cool. It, 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 the picture that it shows or, or the, portrait or the painting that's hanging on the wall is that of this rock you know and it shows above and below right and above it shows all the growth and plant life vegetation and whatnot and what have you and below i from what i remember it shows uh almost like graves underneath or like bones and like some skulls so you know that that gives you the impression that obviously you know as as much as there is life on this island there's also death yeah. uh and I would say this is this is much more of a we can call it a, a psychedelic cerebral ghost story. Yeah. Um very fair. So I definitely appreciated it. I think for me, I wanted to get where it was going not necessarily faster. I just felt that it, it wasn't burn. as engaging to me. Yeah. And and sometimes and I'm okay with slow burn. Um, yeah, I don't I don't mind those types of films like I think about movies like The Innkeepers, which a lot of people yeah. and that's a Thai West film, you know, so yeah. that's right up my alley. I'm a big fan of Thai West. Um, And, and you know, I'm thinking about movies like that. I, I think with this movie, I just wanted a little bit more, you know, I just wanted a little bit more on the journey there to to the climax of the film. Yeah, um, that's but I think fair. some of the scenes that that were some of it, it's incredibly effective at, uh, you know, at times, uh, there are moments that are truly unsettling. Um, so overall, I, I mean, I'd say it was fair. I'd probably give it like a three out of five. That's so fair. I liked it. I liked yeah, it. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't dislike it. Yeah. Um, I, I think I just wanted more, you know, cause when yeah. you said, Oh, this is in my top five, I'm like, Oh, okay. This is, I'm thinking maybe this is like a gem that like I haven't heard of that a lot of people aren't necessarily talking about. Yeah, uh, that's really good. But I think I understand again why you like it. I just think it's catered to a very specific audience. So, yeah. But I mean, if anything, it's piqued my interest in the rest of his work. I'm excited to check out that other movie, Bait, because I'm hearing that Bait is similar in vain to this movie, except it's a little more digestible because a, a lot of the things I read online, people were kind of saying the same things that I was thinking where it's like, yeah. oh, you know, really appreciate the ending. Beautifully shot, you know great editing um very eerie you know very not necessarily scary in regards to jump scares but uh scary in regards to the slow build and the tension that's established um but yeah i think i was just looking for something a little more on that journey um yeah to the to the end of our our character's arc but i do like like the subtle hints that are thrown in here and there again this is a very visual movie everybody there's not a lot of dialogue in this movie at all yeah um there's some exchanges of dialogue between um, our our lead and can we say it's well, I don't want to say I don't want to give it away to anybody else that hasn't seen yeah, it. But yeah, there's yeah. a younger woman yeah, who seemingly lives with her or inhabits the island with her. Yeah, uh, obviously the the reasoning for that, it's revealed uh, towards the end of the film what what her purpose is there and, and what's actually happening. So I, I don't want to give away any spoilers for anybody. Yeah. Um, but other than that, there's not a lot of dialogue. I mean, there's not a lot of characters in this film. I think there's one other gentleman uh, that's, again, present. But th this is a very cerebral movie. So yeah. uh, without giving anything away, you know, there's certain things that are there and certain people that she encounters that are not what, what they seem, right? Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I think overall it was it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. I, I I'm willing to give it another watch. Yeah. And I'm it's funny, Chase, because I'm curious how I would perceive this movie if I never watched Skin of a Rink because there and that's the only thing. There were certain editing choices yeah. uh, that I noticed that immediately reminded me of Skin of a Rink. And I have yeah. such a bad taste in my mouth from that movie. Yeah. That I was it's like I'm applying <laughs> that to this film, yeah. which again, and I'm being completely honest with everybody yeah. that's watching this and, and you, it, yeah. that is not fair. It is not yeah. fair for me to do that. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to attribute yeah. what I feel about skin of a rink to this movie. Yeah. Um, but again, there's, there's similarities between the two films. So I'm interested to see what you, you'd think of a, a movie like skin of a rink. If you ever end up checking that out. Um, yeah. So basically wait for the hype to die do down. down the line. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah. whenever everybody was telling me to watch it, okay, I'm probably going to wait about a year and a half before. Yeah, I, do. I would you know? because yeah. I, I made that mistake and, and I don't have, I, I I'm not going to do that anymore. Yeah, because so many people were talking about it and I saw a lot of buzz online about it. And I was mm -hmm. like, all right, like, what what is this movie? And then people were saying like, oh, this is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's literally like a child's dream or like a child's nightmare. And I was like, all right, well, that sounds pretty interesting. Like that's that's quite a, a line to 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 say to describe a movie um, to yeah. throw out there. So um, and regrettably, that was just not a good experience. But yeah, Ennis Men was 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 solid. Yeah, I think if it, yeah, people who are fans of cerebral horror with more of a psychedelic aesthetic to it, I think will really enjoy this movie. Right. Yeah. Um, You really That's do have fair. to go into it with as open a mind as possible to really appreciate um, Jenkins, uh, his approach to directing as far as with yeah. this film anyway. So uh, I'm interested to check out the rest of his filmography. You know, I'm, I'm still going to give him a chance. Uh, I do want to see that movie bait. So maybe that's something you and I can do You'll down like the line. We can, we can check yeah. that out. Oh, you've it's seen been it. a while. It's been a while. Um, oh, I remember checking okay. that out forever ago. It's really good. Um, yeah. But yeah, I can definitely see like visually aesthetic movies, especially if I go through a bend or like a binge mm -hmm. of like very narrative driven um, or something like that. These movies tend to come off to me and impact me a lot like more. Than it probably mm -hmm. would had I just checked it out, you know, went and saw Infinity Pool, which uh, remember, this is the trailer that opened up for Infinity Pool, which yeah. got me interested because my favorite shot, I would damn near put it in my top 20 shots in a movie is that one with the Colt standing on the rocks on here that mm -hmm. I just fucking loved, dude. I would want that as a mural on my wall. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just yeah. beautiful the way that they are, the way that it looks and I always have an appreciation like House of the Devil when I talk about it. Is mm -hmm. it a, a masterpiece like when I talk about it and how it is? No, I think that's one of the best slow burn endings in a slow burn horror movie ever. I do genuinely yeah. believe that. But is the rest of the movie great from beginning until that point? Not necessarily. But the, it's the mm -hmm. way that it's shot, the way that it's a more modern movie that's made to look just like Innisman, you know? Mm -hmm. Even though that's different because this one was film that is digitally added green in House of the Devil. So... Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see. I mean, you liked it more because I know like this is like a very specific movie that I like. Like if I told you to watch Bo is Afraid, I don't think you'll like it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think you'll like Bo is Afraid, but that broke, I think, my second for the year. Yeah, you know, it's just crazy, dude. I think out of every I think out of the three of us, you have the most. I mean, you're you're willing to give most things a chance. I think yeah. you are more. Uh, what's I'm trying to think of the right word to describe your approach. Could, I mean, we could say that out of the three of us, Gabe is definitely the most critical. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I lie somewhere in the middle. Like I can be very critical of certain yeah. films. Depending, I think with me, it's about context as well. Like I don't have a lot of context regarding, you know, Mark Jenkins and his work. So, yeah, I wanted to be. I, I was a little more forgiving of this because it's like, okay, this is the first film that I've seen of his. So I always try to keep those things in mind. And I think I, I'm somewhere in the middle between Gabe and yourself where, you know, I can be much more open-minded and willing to forgive a lot of stuff. And then I think you're one step uh, a, ahead of me in that regard where you're like, you know, you can appreciate a lot more things than even I can. So I, I think yeah. that's kind of the trajectory in terms of where we stand amongst each other. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, I will say, bad. You, yeah, I will say the fact that the film is so beautifully shot that really kept me invested, kept me interested. Yeah, because it's like, okay, this is kind of like I'm, 
I found myself like waiting for things to, and it, it felt long for me too. And, and did it? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it felt really long. And and again, I watched this late at night. So it could have been the fact that I had a very long day and yeah, you know, that sometimes, you know, certain movies tend to drag depending on whether yeah. or not you're, you're into it. But I, I tried to stay up and sit through it and I did. And, um, yeah, that's why I think I'm, I'm probably going to give it another shot. I'll probably wait a while and then watch it again. Yeah. Um, you know, I got to get that taste of skin and marink out of my mouth because um, it's just lingering. And obviously it's, you know, it, it's so funny. You watch a certain type of film and it it's weird how it how it could shape your opinion, you know, and it's like you're, yeah. you're you can be less receptive or more receptive to certain movies of that of that nature. So, yeah, um, I, I think Ennis Men is leagues better than skin and marink. I mean, <laughs> here's the thing with this movie, as I said, it it's not so out there that even the most open-minded people are just like, all right, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah. you know, like, what are we going for here? You know? Um, yeah, I I'd say visually the, the visuals in this movie are the best thing that it has going for. I mean, again, the soundtrack is, what would you describe the score as? I mean, it's much more, it's, it's very, eerie. I don't want to, it's, it's eerie. It's got like a slight, I guess we could say there's some, I don't want to say industrial, but it's very like eerie, very atmospheric. So it's I appreciate atmospheric for sure. Yeah, I, I appreciated that. Um, there were there was a certain moment in this movie that actually I got a kind of a kick out of. It's when she finds the piece of wood that says oven. Yeah. On the rocks. That reminded yeah. me of the fog. Oh, when, yeah. When they find a thing, you know, um, with yeah. the ship on it and it turns into the coin and i was like okay wait are they going for like a fog are they going yeah. for like a little fog homage here so yeah. I, I don't know if that's and i don't know if that's what jenkin was going for with this yeah. but um i got a, a slight kick out of that it's the first thing i thought of but i mean just yeah just the visual aesthetic of this movie you know if i could give it one thing it's that i mean and yeah. again the shots of the waves crashing against the Great. rocks and you just hear that it's you kind of get immersed you know watching it on my TV and you know, my setup, you get immersed in that, in that sound, you know, you just kind of get absorbed in that world. It's um, like ASMR to fall asleep to. It is. It, it's <laughs> actually a perfect way to describe it. And that's what I felt like. And even, even the shots on the Island, there's some beautiful shots of the vegetation and the plant life. And you have like the, the birds that are there inhabiting the Island and, you know, they're kind of flying around landing on things and whatnot. And, um, you know, you hear them chirping and singing and, and that was all great. You know, it was like, yeah. it, it was an experience, you know? Yeah. Um, I think if I got like stoned and then watched this movie, I, I, <laughs> I'd be having a little bit of a trip, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's one of those movies. It, and I, I liked that. That's how I classify this. It's, it's definitely, it's like a cerebral psychedelic, um, much more psychological ghost story. Yeah. Uh, which I can appreciate. But so those are my overall thoughts. Hell yeah. Um, I'm interested to check out what else he's done. That movie bait. I'm definitely going to watch that because I'm hearing that that's really one of the best things he's put out. So I'm, I'm curious about that. I'm definitely going to check that out. And it's yeah. funny. I don't know how this is pronounced because when you, when you mentioned the name, I was like, what is Ennis men? What is that? Mm -hmm. So I did a little bit of research. Apparently men is actually pronounced like Maine. Yeah. Like, so Ennis Maine. Yeah. And, I guess it's it translates to Stone Island. Stone which Island is cool. Yep. And Cornish. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, and yep. Cornish. So um that was a neat little thing there that they did with the title. Yeah. Um but yeah, and it's it's got similar themes to movies like The Fog, you know, with the again, don't want to get any yeah. I don't want to give too much away. So slight spoiler tag here for anybody that hasn't seen it. Skip ahead like a minute or so. Um, but it's got some references to movies like the fog where, you know, there's a ship that's crashed or there's a shipwreck yeah. and, and that kind of, you know, uh, we, we find out about that obviously as the movie unfolds, you know, later in the film. But, um, so yeah, there were definitely things in this movie that I appreciated very much. So I just, again, the, it was the journey to, yeah. you know, you were, the, there's just the more substance result. in there for sure. Yeah. And that's valid. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and, and that's the biggest criticism that I think I saw when after the fact when I was trying to kind of, you know, let this marinate with me after watching like okay, well what do I think about this? And once I came to my conclusion, that was one thing that I saw a lot uh in in regards to audience reaction was it's very much more of a stylistic approach. Yeah. Um as opposed to uh having a little more substance in there. So and I think that's at the end of the day what I was looking for. Like I appreciated the style, I appreciated the visuals. 
I appreciated the artistic choices. Uh, I was just hoping for a little bit more in, in regards to substance. So, which, yeah. you know, I, I think is a, a valid criticism, but at the same time, I don't, I don't think it's anything that necessarily makes this a bad movie. Um, I, I just think you have to have a certain appreciation for, for these types of films to really like it. And it's, it's obviously not going to be a movie for everybody, but I appreciate that you recommended it to me. And I can, again, I can see why you like it. So it's definitely a movie that, um, that I think y- y- you need to have a little bit more patience for right yeah um i'm interested to see what gabe would think if 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 he were to watch it you know i'm curious but i don't think i'd recommend it to him i need i need to get yeah. him something like he okay so like i guess a little bit of a sneak peek his next movie is out of the blue i refuse to do a versus if he refuses to watch that mm-hmm. yeah. because i need him to give a movie i recommend to him a five out of five and i think yeah. that's the movie that he will give at least a four and a half at least there, I mean, I, if he I doesn't think. like that one, then I really don't think there's any hope. <laughs> I really don't think this this, uh, yeah. this venture has been worth it, you know? Otherwise, I'm going to go back anyway. to Tokyo Gore Police t- style movies and just keep mm-hmm. telling him that things are great, and then I'm just going to keep recommending him off-the-wall yeah. shit like Tokyo Gore Police. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but he'll those like are that my one. Thoughts. Those are my thoughts yeah. on Ennisman, or Ennisman, yeah. I should say. So, so let's get to The Raid, because the this raid. is a movie that, I reviewed, um, I, I did a steel book showcase for this movie. Uh, and anybody that's interested in that can check that out on our channel. It's available to watch. Uh, but chase had, had never seen the raid. And I think I, I forget when it was that you said, yeah, I've never seen it. I was like, dude, you've never seen it. And I think Gabe kind of jumped in and said, dude, you got to watch it. It's yeah. one of the greatest, what many people consider to be one of the greatest action movies of, of that era. You know, the early, I guess we can say the 2010s, so to yeah. speak. Right. Yeah. And this is before films like Mad Max had uh, had graced our presence. So yeah, had um, dropped from the skies above. Exactly. Yeah, from the heavens. Um, <laughs> yeah, from the heavens, uh, where where you know there's a throne uh, in which George Miller sits upon. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what are your yeah. thoughts on the raid? Let's let's hear it. I'm interested. So before I go into like the actual like beginning, like front to back part of the movie, there's one thing I had to talk about. So like around like the 10, 15 marker where they're kind of in more in the slums and stuff like that. And it's, it's focusing more on like the in units and stuff and more the action sequences are happening. I was like, man, this fucking music sounds familiar, man. I'm fucking vibing with it. Let's go. Everything, you know, like the grunge style, everything. I was like, dude, I know who made this fucking music. I know this sound. This is a classic sound. And I was like refusing to look at it. And then the fucking credits roll. And it's our boy, Mike fucking Shinoda. And I was just, whoa, I was just do like, as like, um, if a lot of people don't know for like the podcast and stuff like that, that's my music. And I just do it as just a hobby. Uh, like he is single handedly the reason why I wanted to start making music and him and MF doom. Like I just, mm. to, to, to just have the fact that he got to compose a movie, you know what I mean? Like that. And he just elevated it in certain scenes, you know, with the hats, the kicks, the compression, everything, just 10 out of 10 soundtrack. Just Mike Shinoda is the fucking man. Mm. So, um, two, Dread ripped this movie off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dread really ripped this movie off, man, because Dread is one of my favorite, other favorite action movies, and I kind of look at it slightly differently now. Yeah. Um, well, I think I said that to you too. I said, you, if you're going to watch this, a lot of people after, after when Dread was released, Dread was released after this. Yeah. Tw- two uh, years fact, after. It was a couple of years after, I think. Yeah. Um, it, it could have been there could have been less time between these films. Yeah. So a lot of people looked at Dread, and Dread wasn't necessarily a huge financial success for a I lot of reasons. Movie. But yeah, um, yeah, and Dread is a cool movie. It kind of does its own thing. But yes, it, it's let's say let, let me put it this way: it it's hard to it it's hard to watch Dread and after, after this. having seen this movie not yeah. acknowledge that there's obviously a heavy influence um yeah. you know in in regards to the the setting um uh, in the plot yeah uh, the, the dread did not or was not uh, you know let's just say inspired uh by the raid yeah so. yeah no it it like halfway through you know fighting your way up type of stuff um i really liked it um, if you've seen the movie, you know, like it, 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 it's an action masterpiece. And in, in regards to like the martial arts, it uses an Indonesian form of martial arts and kind of showcases what they do over there for where the, the country was made in. So massive respect for like the coordination, the chore- choreography, 
Um, one of my fa- all-time favorite fight scenes is now in this movie. Um, maybe slight spoilers, not really. But the, mm. the part where he's got somebody chained up and then he just, as soon as... Um, I, I'm horrible with fictional names. As soon as our main character enters the room for like a confrontation, mm-hmm. he lets him down so that he can try to whoop both of their asses. I just thought that was like the most <laughs> meta thing ever. <laughs> and bro, he handled business for sure. You know what yeah. I mean? He held his own against two great warriors. So um, that was phenomenal. My only slight complaint, and it was a bit nitpicky, even though it was tropey, it Mm. definitely did it really well. Kind of the twist with like his commander and stuff like Mm. that. Predictable. You know, it it didn't like take me aback, but it wasn't predictable that the movie made it predictable. It's just like so many movies have done that. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? This movie definitely did it better than typically. Like you can usually see it coming from a mile away, but in this one you didn't, you know? Mm -hmm. So I immense respect for that. The ending of the movie, I'm super stoked. Yeah, like, like um, whenever I told Gabe I had finally watched it, I kind of dropped a hint. He was like, you better have liked it. I wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to put like, you know how sometimes I'll goof around with Gabe and I'll put like a poop emoji <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for yeah, something exactly. he really likes. So I was going to do that, but then I just ended up sending you guys my eBay order from Blow It Out of Here or uh, Please Rewind. And I was like, here, I'll let you know I at least bought the movie. So Because I heard... Um, and I, I'm sure you can vouch for this. Like it does have a pretty strong blue filter, at least on the HD stream that I rented. Mm-hmm. I rented it off Apple TV and it yeah. honestly did not look good. It definitely was the big reason I went ahead and bought that 4k. And I heard yeah, that 4k is great. So here's the thing with that. So there, so, and I think I mentioned this in my video review uh, yeah. when I, when I did this, when I talked about the steel book release, there's some in it, there's this whole debate going on about revisionism with movies and whether or not directors should be screwing around or adjusting the color grading of their films and like here's the thing at the end of the day this comes down to preference right yeah i think personally speaking the the regrading we could say for lack of a better word that they did with this release with the 4k release i think it enhances the look of the film i think it makes it look much more cinematic yeah. In, in my opinion, um, the black levels are better. You know, shadows look deeper. They look darker. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you lose, I guess we could say some visibility in backgrounds, but at the same time, the detail is much better. The colors look more realistic. I yeah. just think this kind of brings new life to a movie like this. I'm someone who can't. I'm just going to go on a little I don't want to go on a rant here about this, but the, like the look of that Blu-ray, like this, the stream that you probably watch the HD it's probably stream, that uh, I'm assuming ripped from the, it's similar to that Blu-ray because that Blu-ray. and the Blu-ray has that uh, apparent bluish. Yeah, filter, it was which, jarring. Yeah. And that's even something that I remember seeing. I don't know if it's even on the DVD, but because I saw this movie back a few years after it was released. I think this movie was, I want to say it was like 2012 or something like that. 11. Yeah. 2011 or two. Yeah. 11 then. So, I mean, I had probably seen it 2014, 2015 from what I remember. And I remember it having that like bluish tint to everything. Yeah. Which like, okay, great movie. I just hated the look like, yeah, Yeah. I hate movies that have like this, that, that filter over everything where everything just looks like one color or is like, some it's like on the spectrum of of that one color i I cannot stand that it just takes me out of those it takes me out of the movie regardless of whether it's intended or not again this is my opinion you know everybody's entitled to theirs you know the people like the bluish look that's totally cool and yeah you know when i watched the the 4k release um i i saw that discussion you know online you know there there's a segment of people and fans of this movie that like the original look and they're upset with the fact that they stood around with the grading for this release but I, I think in certain situations if it enhances the film overall if it if it makes it look better and, and the majority of people are happy with it um in some cases it works and this is one of those cases so i i think it enhances the film overall i think again it gives it much more of a cinematic feel than it had previously and with a movie like this where the directing uh is is I mean, the directing really makes this movie. The directing, the camera work, and the stunt and the fight choreography, right? Yeah. Um, that that really shines in this film, as you said. Like you know, the the twist, so to speak, is is not one that we haven't seen before. 
even the plot itself of this film it's pretty straightforward i just think it's yeah. it's really the way in which it's shot that makes it so outstanding right yep um but yeah i i would i think you're gonna like the 4k transfer much better i'm interested to hear your thoughts once you watch it you know, once yeah. you get the steelbook and you actually watch that 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 uh that transfer i think you might like it a little better i'm not a fan of that original bluish tone so to speak so those are my yeah. thoughts but as far as I'm aware, I read and the director approved having that blue shit removed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, why would it be a problem if that's what the director wanted? You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. Well, it's like people yeah. were saying with like Michael Mann and Heat, like, yeah, going back in and and altering the grading on that. It's I mean, listen, if if this is the director's vision, yeah, then that's what it is. But at the same time, we can look at the other end of that spectrum or the other end of that and say. You know, we could look into what people are saying about James Cameron with True Lies, which again, those releases are not out yet. So we're going to save our 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 judgment until we actually see those. But I mean, that's yeah. a big criticism that they've leveled it or thrown at Cameron, right? Because yeah. of him going back in with the DNR and all that stuff. You know, people are really obviously upset about that. I mean, we're not going to get into that right now because that's a whole other conversation. But yeah, I mean, there's a whole debate on that. You know, in regards to to revisionism and directors you know altering their own films but at the end of the day i i think in this case the 4k release it's it's just a better quality uh presentation of the movie so i think it makes the movie much more yeah. appealing visually so yeah and that like this movie also had like a super tense moment when, when they're in the wall with the machete yeah dude i feared for everybody in that room bro <laughs> that was, yeah <laughs> That's wild, like, and that's the thing. They, they, yeah. they and uh, we got to give credit to uh, to the director. Um, he he he's such a good, and for somebody that I haven't really seen much of his other movies, but you know Gareth Evans. Films, I mean, yeah. yeah, Gareth Evans, and and he wrote and directed this movie. So yeah, um, and, and shout out to, and I I know you talked about him, but our our leading man or like the protagonist i don't know his name in the movie either i forget it but his name is uh i think it's Iko or Iko Uwais. I'm, I'm not sure if i'm butchering that name i hope i'm not but uh he's an indonesian actor on uh, martial artist i mean uh, we can't we can't give enough credit to the people in this movie and there's another guy uh his name in the movie the guy named mad dog he's one of the henchmen he's the guy with like the long hair the ponytail um the crazy looking dude um Awesome martial artist and stunt man. Uh, so, uh, yeah, stunts and the martial arts in this film are awesome. And the whole thing where, like, they're, like, breaking through the floors in order to, like, move around and breaking through walls. I just thought that was such an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, if there's fans of Dread out there, um, Dread essentially takes the, the scenario present in this film and the setting and just kind of i mean the, the only thing that dread really added to it was the fact that you know they're taking that drug that like slows down time yeah you know yeah um yeah that's the which, biggest difference so yeah i mean i still really like dread as a film uh i still appreciate it. it's still a fun movie for me but yeah i definitely i don't know just looked at it differently you know once once i figured out that this movie existed so Dude, I got a like a big chuckle when I was looking up the director towards the end. I mm -hmm. saw Gareth Evans and my mind automatically went to Edwards and I was like, dude, Gareth Edwards. Had, yeah, I was like, yeah. the guy that did Godzilla did this and yeah. the creator. <laughs> so then I went and looked yeah. at the filmography and no, it's like I heard Raid 2 is good still. Um so yeah. I'm excited to check that out. But yeah, uh, a solid I would say like uh, my ADHD makes me have to work with a hundred point scale. So I have to go with a 9.8 out of 10 just because of that tropiness towards the end. But I mean, yeah, it's a damn near masterpiece. If it wasn't for that, if it wasn't oh, yeah. just for that, like that slight end, like it, it is damn good, dude, like everything about it. And I'm almost positive getting a hold of, because it's like, like, like we were just talking about with that filter. Like there's just sometimes like Mad Max Fury Road, of course has a blue filter, but it's for the night scenes. It's to push, yeah. uh, you know, like a, a, a style approach, but it's temporary. Um, mm -hmm. Requiem for a Dream has a very similar style um, kind of filter in it, but it makes mm -hmm. sense because you're supposed to be seeing something through a different eye. You mm -hmm. know, the blue filter, while I respect it's a stylistic choice, it's just sometimes you're just trying to enjoy it. You're like, man, this blue is kind of pissing me off. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. But yeah, I'm excited to see the 4K master and it might elevate it. Sometimes that's why I like to blind buy things because when you get a hold of it in that format like that, Mm -hmm. um getting the best available version of it just elevates it like my first watch for 2001 was on 4k and i think that mm -hmm. 
jumps like really shot it up on my rankings to like my first second mo- uh, favorite movie of all time yeah. um just because of like my jaw was dropping the whole time like holy shit mm. that looks yeah. incredible holy cow so yeah that's my thoughts on raid and yeah had a great time just i literally i had things i had to do because i was gonna like piece since like three different parts and watches i canceled everything i had to do to finish it so i liked it that <laughs> much go. i was like hey guys i'm not showing up so yeah i'm gonna just <laughs> finish the raid they were really good go. really good excited to see what our next challenge is gabe should definitely have watched out of the blue I, what what am i oh yeah i'm supposed to watch um yeah, yeah what tuned. are you watching it's a uh, mine is big lebowski if that was official oh, you guys yeah. announced it on the podcast at least <laughs> that's right that's right i forgot it was big I, I didn't know if you were doing big lebowski next for for yours but i don't know what other title yeah. i have i know your I'll guys try to titles. get on these at some point yeah. i mean that's the thing with me because i i've seen most things um yeah you're and, the mediator think, for the most part yeah i'm kind of like yeah i'm i'm like the what do you call it? I'm I'm like the point man, you know, or the hype man, because <laughs> yeah, you and you and Gabe, uh, your tastes are much more varied <laughs> than mine. Yeah. So you know, yeah. you you guys will probably not see me on as many of these as these other two guys, but uh, yeah, you know, these two are quite entertaining. Um, <laughs> when we especially do this. you know, it, it, I love watching Chase's reactions to to Gabe because Gabe is just so like it's almost like we know whether or not he's going to like it or not because he's yeah. just very you know he and he's so yeah. he's so critical of things he's so yeah. critical, which is great you know that's yeah. what makes his 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 perspective so enjoyable you know because yeah it's almost like he's there to like you know keep you and me in line because otherwise it would just be uh, pandemonium. You know, I'm gonna make a YouTube short from the first time whenever we did Tokyo Gore Police. Of every time he goes, ah, ah, like that, you know, every oh, time he's trying dude. to think, like, ah, like you got, you he's gotta trying to do, formulate. It. <laughs> you got to do that. You gotta, that's why I think it'd be so funny to do yeah. a watch along with him because the audience would get such a. Because I just, I just imagine him in his house, in his room, yeah. sitting there. You know, he's got his Celsius. He's like, all right, <laughs> let's do this. I'm ready to fucking subject myself to this. It's, yeah. <laughs> open my mind as much as possible and then it's like it's not even like two minutes in he's probably already throwing his arms up in the air like what <laughs> what did they like, like what did they recommend me yeah you know i gotta give anyway. him something crazier than tokyo gore please because there's definitely crazier things out there that we could get oh him. for sure for sure <laughs> but stay tuned yeah. for those excellent endeavors guys and as always thank you for staying tuned for not only our third episode but mine and will's very first foray into this i'll probably end up challenging him to get to Bo is afraid whenever he gets about a solid six hours of his life because that movie is long mm. yeah it's a long um, movie it's a long yeah. one thank you it guys so much that, that's- yeah thanks guys like subscribe hit the notification bell if you like the content that you saw today stay tuned thank you everybody Thank you.